about the fear of the Lord. And the re here's, my, here's the definition of the reverential fear of God. It's fearing God as a controlling motive of, what the, of the life in matters spiritual and moral. Not a mere fear of His power and righteous ret retribution, but a wholesome dread of displeasing Him. That's the, that to me, that's what it comes down to. A wholesome dread of displeasing God in any way. Dress, speech, conduct, food, any way. That to me, that is what fear of the Lord is. It's not wanting to displease Him. Amen. No, we should treat Him as precious, valuable. He should be... He should be number one in everything we do. Right. Before we do it, we should say, is this, going to, is this going to please Him? Is this pleasing to Him? Before we talk about that person, talk to that person, is it pleasing to Him? Really, think about it. I tell you what, there'd be a lot more silence. That's true. Don't you think? Yes. Yeah. If we had to say that. Is this pleasing? Is it pleasing the way I'm treating my husband? Is it pleasing the way I'm treating my wife? Is it pleasing the way I'm treating my neighbor? Or even your dog when you get down to it. Is it pleasing to him? Is it pleasing how I'm spending my time? Is this pleasing to him? Because I, I want to hear it. When I cross over, I want to hear it. Well done, yeah. thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. And I know I'm not going to, you know, I know I'm not going to hit every mark, but I'm going to try. Yes, yeah. That's my goal. Yes. And it should be everybody's goal. Amen. Yeah. You know, I was looking up scriptures on fearing the Lord. I found over 200 or more. There is so many on fearing the Lord. And there's so many benefits that come from it. I mean, there's just oodles and oodles. You know, it's like, you know, when you think about the President of the United States, if he were to come here tonight, I bet everybody in here would be dressed different than they are tonight. Think about it. Every one of us would have dressed differently. And we came to meet with the king of kings. Yeah, I know. Amen. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with dressing down. I'm just saying that the casualness of the church has cost them. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm not saying our church as a whole. I'm talking about the, the church of the body. Right. Because you think about it, when you dress down mm -hmm. a little more casual, it will come across in your attitude yes, it does. if you don't watch to see that it doesn't. Sure. That's right. and it's costing us because there's not enough reverential fear of the Lord. Right. Ooh. That's what I'm <laughs> Have you ever been ministering something you didn't really want to minister, but you knew you're supposed to do it? Yes. Like, oh, you know, we don't really want to say this, but it is, it's costing us. Yes. yes. You know how I know it's costing us? There's not very many people here. That's right. That's right. It's costing us. It's costing the church. That's right. Yes, it is. one could put a thousand of and two can put 10,000. They thought we could do this place was packed there. That's right. That's right. It's costing us. It's costing us. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when he, we honor God, he honors us. Yes. He honors us with his presence. There's nothing like his presence. Oh, God, you enter in. Oh, and you say, oh, God, I place you at the highest place. I believe, God, I place you, God. You can say this with me. I place you, God. And the highest place, God, in my life. 
preaching high God into the church. We repent for the bad decisions that have been made, God. Oh God, we say, forgive us, God. Forgive us, God, for our sinful ways, God. Yes. Forgive us, God, for taking prayer out of school. Forgive us for killing children, God. We ask you to forgive us and heal our land, God. Forgive us, God, for not putting you first in our lives, God. Forgive us for it, God. We ask you to forgive us, God. I pray to all of you, maybe all. I spent all I can be praying. You know, there's a connection between the glory and the presence yes. and honoring God. That's right. I want that presence all the time. Yes. You know, I can have it all the time. Yes. I can have it more. Do y'all want more? Yes. I want more. Yes. I want more of His presence. Amen. You know, He says, if you'll draw near to me, I'll draw nigh to you. I want more of His presence. I'm hungry. Yes. Are you hungry? Yes. I'm hungry for it. Man, I'm hungry to walk through the door and feel the presence of God. Yes. He said, those who hunger and thirst for Him will be filled. Yes. Man, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry to do His will. I'm hungry to do His way. I'm hungry to do His plan, not Jeanette's plan. I want his plan. Yes. Let's go to Hebrews 5 7. offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. So Jesus feared the Lord. He had a holy fear of displeasing God. You know, the more we yield to God, the more he'll show up in our life. That's true. Yes. The more you respect someone, the more place you give them, the more you'll hear from them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's true. Yeah. You know, just by coming here, you're giving place. You're saying, I'm interested, God. Sure. I'm interested in what you have for me. Yeah. Just by coming. It's easy to stay home. Yes, it oh. is. Yes, it but you is. know what? That's just flesh. It is. Oh. It's just flesh. That's right. Just the flesh talking. You want to go higher, you've got to do something different. That's right. You can't keep doing the same thing. That's right. You want something different. That's right. You can't. It just doesn't work that way. That's right. You know, I, I guess I'm glad it doesn't. It just doesn't work that way. I want to read uh, 1 Samuel 2, verse 30. I didn't even mark my scriptures, so it'll be right there with me. 1 Samuel 2, verse 30. Therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever, but now the Lord says, far be it from me, for, for those who honor me 
I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. You know, despise doesn't mean like we think it. Like we think, oh, I just despise it. That, that, that's not what it means. It means just a good little place right, or a little time. When you give God a little time, he's going to give you a little time. Yes. Everywhere we are is a product of what we did yesterday. Amen. If you honored God yesterday, He's going to honor you today. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it's like when you have your, you know, submission is, you know, one of the keys to honoring God. You know, submitting even when you don't want to. Some people think they're submitting if they're doing. Just serving in the church, they're submitting. But when you do something and you don't really want to do it, that's submission. It's like when your child, you tell your child to take the trash out, and they don't want to, but they do it. They do it anyway. Well, that's submission. But when they stomp their feet that's right. all the way, and that's a heart that's right. issue. That's right, that's right. And they are in rebellion in their heart. And that is not pleasing to God. So our hearts need to be right in everything we do where the Lord is concerned. I want to go to Hebrews 12, 25. Our God is an awesome God. Yes, He is. He's an awesome God. Awesome God. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they do not escape who refused him who spoke on the earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he's promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, the things which cannot make be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. He's an awesome God. Yes, he is. He's a consuming fire. Yes, he is. But the church as a whole has lost that. Yes. It's like sloppy agape or whatever. If I want to go to church today, I'll go. If I don't want to go, I don't go. I, I, that's where we are. So true. So true. And that's wrong. Yes, it is. And that's why our country is going that way. That's right. It's because so God is down here on the bottom rung. And I'm not saying and, and I'm not saying that's true of everybody. I'm just saying that as a whole. Yes. Yes. And I don't want it to be true of me. No. 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 And I don't want it to be true of my children no. or my grandchildren. That's right. I want them to have an honor for God. Yes. I want to serve Him in front of them. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay. I want to go to Proverbs 6, verse 16. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue. Anybody told a lie like me? I have to raise my hand. God hates lying. Yes. Amen. And if he hates it, we should hate it. That's right. We shouldn't do it. Amen. 
hands that shed innocent blood, that's abortion right so there. Yes, it is. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. Man, that's a biggie right there. That is a biggie. I don't want to be guilty of that, do you? No. No. I don't. Enough said there. Remember, remember in, in Acts when Annas, Nias, and Sapphira, and they, they fell dead? Yes. Yeah. The power of God was at an all time high. And it's no wonder God can't turn the power up on us. That's true. I'd be a lot of dead people. That's true. It's true. That's so true. I want to be holy. Yes. Right? Yes. I don't want to speak anything ugly about anybody. Yes. No. I said to the Lord, I said, God, help me to keep my mind yes. out of other people's business. Yes. yes. You know, you can get in people's business yes. with your mind yes. and not say anything, and it's none of our business. That's right. Did y'all ever think about this? The angels, when we speak the word, the angels go perform it. This is right. When we speak evil words, there's some evil angels out there. We need to keep our little trap shut. Amen. Just saying. Amen. And I am talking to myself, okay? Yes. Yes. Amen. Keep our mouth shut. Because that's our brothers and sisters especially. Yes. yes. We've got to honor them. That's right. I, I heard Kenneth say this one, one time. Don't, don't, said God got home. said, don't be treating my daughter that way. She be treating my daughter that way. Think about it. Don't you be treating my son and my daughter that way. Right. I mean, that's really who he is. I'm his daughter. Yes. You're his son. Yes. Yes. We don't got any business talking ugly about one another or treating yeah. one another. Yeah. We ought to treat the people in our house better honor. with honor respect. and respect. But it, it's so easy to let well, let your hair down because you know they love you. Right. But we shouldn't. Yeah. We shouldn't. And I do. You know, I don't know, probably I'm not as nice to me as I should be many times. <laughs> but he loves me. And I'm so glad and so long suffering. Man, when I look back and I think about it, man, he's been long suffering with me. Yes. A good man. Amen. All right, let's go to Isaiah 29, verse 13. <laughs> Therefore, the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths, and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. So, they were taught to fear, but they didn't have a holy fear. Because a spiritual stupor had fallen on them, and it's like they only had lip service. They don't really know him. You know, it's almost like people have to see signs and wonders. And that's wrong. Yes, yes. We are to be faith people. We are to walk by faith. We are, we are not to have to be, you know, you know, have someone, you know, it was like that they were being taught, you need to fear God, you need to fear God, you need to fear God, instead of having a holy fear. Yes. Yes. They only have lip service. They were denying God's sovereign role. Yes. 
I don't want to deny his sovereign role and have lip service. I want to have an awesome fear of God. Remember that song? I just really like that song. Our God is an awesome God. We had some great songs. Yes. yes. Did we not? Yes. We did. Our Amen. God is an awesome God. He reigns in heaven and earth with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. You know, those songs were sung, and it got down in me. Yes. How awesome God yes, he is. is. He is an awesome one thing that holds it back. Lack of faith. That's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have faith in him. He's an awesome God. There's nothing my God can do. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right, let's go to 1 John 4. No, I'm coming to jumping around. Kind of doing my bestest. Spirit land. John 4, 17. 1 John 4, 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Yes. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So there's your acid test right there. If there's torment, there's a spirit of fear there. If there's torment in your mind. That's, that, that's a spirit of fear. So there's no fear of judgment if we're walking with God. And reverent fear of God does not involve torment in the mind. <clears throat> so if you're being tormented in any way, you say, you get, you spirit of fear. Because right, 1 Peter 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, yes. love, and a sound mind. Yeah. And that means your mind, your will, and your emotions. Yes. You know, it's, you know, it, the church has gotten, I've seen the church get more casual in their dress, but there's a lots of things that I've seen. Now, I don't see them in this church, but I have seen them in other churches. I have seen people bringing drinks in and chips in yeah. and peanuts in yeah. and, you know, like they're going to the movies. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Can you control your flesh for a couple hours? Yes. That's true. I'm just saying. That's good. And people, people don't teach their kids, okay, you can go to the restroom before, before church. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we were taught. Yes, yes. we were. To honor God. Yes. People get on their phones. Yeah. Get on Facebook. Text. Y'all yeah. be doing that. That's right. That is not honor to God. That's right. If Come you're going to be in church, yes. be in church. Yes. Amen. I mean, really. And, and, I, and now here's the thing now, you know, I'm not trying to be, put condemnation on you. I'm just saying that you need to honor God. Yes. Amen. Amen. You need to honor God when you're here and do that when you get home. Amen. Uh, you can do it for a little while. Yeah, it will. You think about it. We never had Facebook. We never had phones before. We survived. People survived. That's right. That's right. That's true. We didn't even leave our phones in the car, really, or at home. Anyway, we don't. I'll, I'll get off the phone. So, anyway, we we really. I think we've gotten too loose in our services. And it's reflecting in our receiving. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Think about it. Yes. Can
Because if you win the church, like the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, is going to leave you there. Would you take your phone? Would you take your phone? I wouldn't take my phone. I'm not talking to me, I bring my phone paper surface. Would you? Our attitudes yep. yes. are too casual. I agree. So good. When it comes to God. And I'm not saying that God doesn't want us to have fun because I believe He does. Oh, yes. Yes. But when we come in here seeking Him with everything that's within us, I'm going to make sure we have a good time. Oh, I can sure. He's going to make sure we leave refreshed yes. and renewed. That's what I want, man. I want his presence. Yeah. More than I want anything. Mm -hmm. I want his presence. And I want to do what it takes to get it. Change me, God. Make those changes in me, God. Yes. Make those changes. Deuteronomy 14. I think I'm getting the most of the message, y'all. <laughs> I think I'm getting it. <laughs> I think you're getting me. Deuteronomy 14.23 And you shall eat before the Lord your God in a place where he chooses to make his name the tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil of the firstborn of your herds and your flocks, that you may all may learn to fear the Lord your God always. So he wants us to learn to fear him. To have that heart, I don't want to displease you, Lord, in any way. my money. I want to bring you the tithe and I want to bring you offerings. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 17 while we're there. Starting at 18. And it shall be when he sits on the throne of his kingdom that he shall write for himself a copy of this law in a book from the one before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God and be careful to observe all the words of this law and these statutes. So, we should be taught. We should be teaching it. Something that should be taught. It's in the scripture to teach it. But we ought to be teaching it. Yes. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7. I don't, I don't hear very many people teaching on it. Yeah. But it's not easy to teach on. But it should be. You should be teaching it. Amen. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let's go to Ephesians 5.21 Submitting to one another in the fear of God. <laughs> he doesn't just say to your husband and your wife, it says to one another. <laughs> All 
All right, let's go to 2 Kings 17, verse 28. said if we would draw nigh to him, he would draw nigh to us. And we are drawing near to him. Verse 28. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. How every nation continued to make gods of its own and put them in the shrines on the high places which the Samaritans had made. Every nation in the cities where they dwelt. The men of Babylon made Sukkoth, Beneth, the men of Cuth, the men of Nergal, the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites made Nimbaaz. I think I'm going to skip that scripture. So they feared the Lord. I'm going to skip down to 32. So they feared the Lord, and from every class they appointed for themselves priests of the high places who sacrificed for them in the shrines of the high places. They feared the Lord, yet served their own gods according to the rituals of the nations from among whom they were carried away. To this day, they continue practicing the former rituals. They do not fear the Lord, nor do they follow their statutes or their ordinances or the law and commandments which the Lord had commanded the children of Jacob, whom he had named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, You shall not fear other gods, nor bow down to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord, who brought you up from the land of Egypt with great power and an outstretched arm, him you shall fear, him you shall worship, and to him you shall offer sacrifice. And the statutes, the ordinances, the law, and the commandment which he wrote for you, you shall be careful to observe forever. You shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget, nor shall you fear other gods. But the Lord your God you shall fear. And he will deliver you from the hand of your enemies. Yes. 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 So there is blessing to fear the Lord. However, they did not obey, but they followed their former rituals. So these nations feared the Lord, yet served their carnal images. Also their children and their children's children have continued doing as their fathers did even to this day. So when you keep doing something, you're going to... Get a harvest from it. So we need to have a deep reverence because God honors those who honor Him. What about those who honor Him more? What's He going to do? He's going to honor you more. The more honor, the more place you give Him, the more He's going to honor you. Yes, amen. I mean, really. It, it's totally up to you. How much honor you get is totally up to you. Yes. How much time you give him, how much money you give him, it's all up to you. He, he, he didn't want robots. He gave us free will. Yes. And we have a will. We have a choice. You know, I, I see it. I see it in myself. I see it in my husband. I see it in, you know, you keep putting your eyes on something. That's what's going to come out. Trust. Yes. Amen. So true. <laughs> so, you know, and I hear people say, oh, you ought to go around examining yourself. Well, I think you should. Yes. Yeah. I hear people saying no, but I think you should. I think, you know, if, if things aren't going well, or you're thinking, why is this? Man, examine. Yes. Say, Lord, what have I been doing with my time? Amen. Where have I been putting my eyes? Where have I been putting my ears? Yes. Because what you put in is what's going to come out. Alright, let's go to Psalms 33. This is a good scripture. I like it. Verse 6, Psalm 33, verse 6. Our God is an awesome God. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. 
By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. The breath. Everything came into existence by his mouth. Yes. When you think about the breath. Yes. God. He's so awesome. He is so awesome. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Is all the earth fearing the Lord? No. That's why we're in the best for him. I'm just so thankful that we are in this world. But we're not of it. Amen. We are a called, set apart people. Yes. We're not living like they're living. That's right. We're choosing That's right. to be holy yes. and get more holy. Amen. Till we become like Enoch and we're just no more. That's, right. That's what he did. Yeah. He got so pleasing to God that he was no more. I do want to do my job, though. Yes, I, do. I want to do whatever he has me to do. You know what? Maybe and I were talking about somebody in his work, and we were talking about how she was. We had a seminar the other night, and I said, he said, man, she's something. You just want to get away from her. And I said, you know what? I said, we need to pray for her. Yeah. We make him in all the woods. Right. And so we began to pray for her. That's we come in contact with people that nobody else does. So we got to do it. Think about it. What if we went to heaven today and we had to pray for her? We were the ones that were supposed to. She didn't know anybody else that was beyond our heavens. Yes, it would. But we began to pray for her. Okay, where was I? Okay. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen. America's God is Amen. still the Lord. I don't care what they say. Amen. The people he has chosen as his own inheritance. You think about it. Every sporting event, what do they sing? God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. That's us. Yes. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individual. He considers all their works. Think about that. He considers. Uh -huh. So he's going to hold us accountable. That's right. Amen. Yes. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. His eye's on us. On those who hope in his mercy. And oh, do I hope in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. No matter yes. what's going around, he will keep us alive. Yes, that's right. Because we fear him. Yes. 
Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in Him because we've trusted in His holy name. Let your mercy, O oh Lord, be upon us just as we hope. I pray that. Let His mercy be upon us. Okay, let's go to Psalms 89, verse 6 through 7. For who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened to the Lord? Remember that song? Who is like our God? No one. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those around him. Yes, right. So we should Amen. be fearing and reverencing Amen. God because he is Amen. an awesome God. Yes, he, he, is. he is an awesome God. You know, when we honor something, we value it, we prize it. When we dishonor something, we, we set it aside or we dis disesteem it. In other words, we don't give it much time. One way we can honor him is to honor others. We need, we need to be honored one another. Yeah. You know, we have been given two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart soul, mind, and body, and love your neighbor as yourself. And it says in there that the second one is like unto it. In other words, you can't, if you don't love your neighbor, you don't love God. You know, you can also show honor by being punctual. Amen. You know, I, I know this one girl. Man. She'd call meetings and she'd be like, and you know what that said to us? You don't value us. You don't value our time. Exactly. You know, and I have learned to try to be, and, I, and I, I miss it, but I've learned to be early, to leave early. And here's yes. why. Because if I will leave early, I won't drive. I won't break the speed limit. I won't be ugly to people. I won't be like, get out of my way. I've learned right. to keep my love walk. I need to leave early. Amen. That's right. Amen. It's an honoring thing. Yeah, right. yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's just a practical way you can so honor. Good. So good. I'm just getting down to some bra sure. brass tacks here. Right. We're to honor the anointing. I think it's important to be on time for church. I think you should be early. Me too. Amen. Yes. Me too. You know, you're your pastor has prayed. He has sought God about what he's going to administer. The worship team has practiced. They, you know, they're, they're, you know, and you honor. Here's the thing. You're not, it's not, you, you, it is honoring to them, but basically you're honoring God when you're doing it because you have a reverence and a respect for the anointing. Yes. 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 And my life changed when I learned that. Not to just go waltzing in after worship had started. Exactly. It changed for me. And I, I thank God that I was taught that. That someone taught me, you need to honor the worship team. You need to honor the anointing. Basically, they said the anointing. And when you put it to me like that, I got it. Yeah. Because it is the anointing that you're dishonoring when you just come in whenever you get ready. That's good for you, Amen. You know, we can also honor by not interrupting. Yes. You know, when you when you interrupt when someone's talking, you're basically saying what I have to say is more important than what you have to say. Exactly right. And I do that. I do this sometimes. I mean, I interrupt Danny. Danny interrupts me. We do it. I'm just saying we do it. But we work at not doing it. Right. We do. And then even this is dishonoring. I tell you, I work on this. You're loading your gun. In other words, what you've got to say. And you're not even listening That's right. to what the other person has to say. That is dishonoring. Yes, it is. That is dishonoring. 
for so many ways we can honor nothing better. Amen. Yeah. Man, I'm getting in. I'm getting in. I'm babbling, aren't I? Anyway. <laughs> you know, think about Jesus. He could do no mighty works there. Yeah. Because they didn't honor him. That's right. You know? A miracle. They might have got a miracle. But because it was Jesus, you know, he just, the son of that, you know, he just from Nazareth, they didn't honor him. You know, there's many people that they do that. You know, whether it be me or whoever ministers besides Pastor Rick. Well, it's just her. I don't care what she is. You know what? You might have got that word to set you free. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, I've, I've had words come from me who I thought the least likely person. You know? we got we to gotta honor one another. Yes. And here's the deal. If you'll honor them, whether you want to or not, That's right. God will honor you. That's yes, he will. Yes, he will. Because I'm his daughter. That's right. That's right. I'm his daughter. You're his sons. Yes. You're his daughter. You're his daughter. Got to honor one another. Amen. I'm going to go to one more scripture, and then I've got some good stuff to read. James 4. I'm going to go to James 4. James 4. Verse 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, your, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Yes. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who are you to judge another? Amen. Think about that. Who are we to judge anyone? Judge not, lest you be judged. Who are we? We're not the judge. We're not. Okay. Now I'm going to get to the beginning. I'm going on. I'm not, I, have, I looked up a bunch of scriptures, but I'm not going to read them all. I'm just going to tell you them and tell you the benefit. Psalms 111 verse 10 says, you get wisdom when you fear the Lord. Deuteronomy 5 verse 29 says, all will be well with you when you fear the Lord. Deuteronomy 6 verse 2 says, your days will be prolonged when you fear the Lord. 2 Kings 17, verse 39 says you'll be delivered out of the hands of the enemy yes. when you fear the Lord. Yes. Psalms 15, 4 says you will be honored when you fear the Lord. Psalms 34, 7 says the angels will encamp around you yes. when you fear the Lord. I want the angels around me. Amen. Psalms 34, verse 9 and Psalms 60, verse 4 says no want will come to those who fear the Lord. Right. Psalms 85 verse 9 says salvation will come to those who fear the Lord. Psalms 103 verse 11 says mercy will come to those who fear the Lord. Yeah. Psalms 115 verse 11 says he'll be your help and your shield yes. if you'll fear the Lord. Psalms 115 verse 13 says he'll bless you. Yes. You know what that means? Empower you yes. if you'll fear the Lord. Psalms 145 verse 19 says he'll fulfill your desires yes. if, you fo if you fear the Lord. Proverbs 1 verse 7 says you'll get knowledge if you fear the Lord. 
Proverbs 14, verse 27 says he'll be a fountain of life if you fear the Lord. Proverbs 22, verse 4 says he'll give riches, honor, and life if you'll fear the Lord. Ecclesiastes 8, verse 12 says all will be well if you fear the Lord. Malachi 4, verse 2 and 3 says healing will come if you fear the Lord. Proverbs 28, verse 14 says, Happy will you be if you fear the Lord. And Proverbs 31, verse 30 says, Praised will you be if you fear the Lord. Now I've got some I want to read. Uh, I'm actually going to go to Psalms 25. This is good, 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 good. There's so much benefit to fear. And remember what I said. Fear is... Reverential fear of God as a controlling motive of the life in matters spiritual and moral, not a mere fear of his power and righteous retribution, but a wholesome dread of displeasing him. That's the key. To me, if you can't remember anything, just, I don't want to displease you, God. That's right. In any way. So, Psalms 25, tw verse 12. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. Yes. Thank you. So we're going to dwell in prosperity, and our children are going to inherit the earth. Yeah. Our seed and our seed seed. Yeah. All right, let's go to Psalms 31. Psalms 31, verse 19. Some of them are just so good, I mean, I wanted to read them. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of sons and men. Amen. That's a good one. Okay, let's go to Psalms 147, verse 11. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him, in those who hope in His mercy. I want Him to take pleasure in me. Amen. Yes. Let's go to Psalms 33. I already read this one once, but I'm going to read it again. Psalms 33, 18. I'm going to read it again. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him, or those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. We don't have to be concerned no. about the gas. Sure. My aunt was fretting. Hmm? We're going to run out of water. What are we going to do with that water? I said, Norma, God's going to take care of us. We will not run out of water. Amen. People in the world... And she goes to church, but obviously she's not going to the rat church. <laughs> We're not going to run out of water. That's right. I'm not running out of water. Are you running out of water? Yeah. No. You know, you think, you need to read the book. That is right Okay, let's go to... Um, Churches throughout all Judea and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit they were multiplied. Do we want to be multiplied in this church? We need to start giving God more place. So we'll be multiplied. Yes, yes. That's a good one. Okay, let's go to Malachi 3, verse 16. You know, and I, I, I just looked through, a, I mean, all, not all of them, y'all. I mean, it would take all night for me to read all the scriptures on fear. But I just picked out some that I thought were good. 
Then those who feared the Lord spoke to us one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord. So because he fears, because we fear him, he writes a book about us. That's good. All right, let's go to Psalms 112. This is a really good one. I like this one a lot. The whole song. Blessed, empowered to prosper is the man who fears the Lord. Deep, in other words, who deeply reverence with awe and trembling. Yes. Do you have awe and trembling for it? Yes. I want to. Yes. Who delights greatly in his commandments. So that's the number one requirement right there to get everything after this. His descendants will be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house. Yes. And his righteousness will endure forever. Yes. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. He's a good man and he deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. That means good judgment. Surely he will never be shaken. You fear the Lord, you'll never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil times. You won't be afraid when they say the gas is $10 a gallon. There's no water. There's no bread. It won't move you. That's right. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. It's fixed. Yes. He will not be afraid yeah. until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He has dispersed abroad. He's given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. That horn means strength. His strength will be exalted with honor. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. The wicked will see it and say, Why? Why is that happening to them? Because he fears the Lord. Man, if there's no other reason, Psalms 112 is enough to fear the Lord. 